strategic information with its suppliers. Okay, this relationship is not based on contracts or money exchange, but why? We have the same goal of bringing the new technology to market. So Japanese companies often do this kind of thing too. They help their suppliers. Okay, in the US they more they want their suppliers to compete, compete against each other. And then the supplier with the lowest price will get the contract. Okay? But in Japan, they want to help their supplier. So they'll choose one supplier and then make a long term relationship with the supplier and help the supplier to improve their system and improve their technology. Okay? Do you want, there's a so slight difference in culture there also. So uh, here it's like the Japanese one, right? They make a long-term relationship. They share their technological information. An example of this is uh, just-in-time production. Have you ever heard of just-in-time production? Just-in-time? Hmm? Yes. Can you explain? Uh, they, they don't want... Extra 
extra part, so they make a car in their their car part is to just go to the their warehouse. Yes. Uh, and they calculate okay. their uh, today's supply. Yes. So it allows them to bring in the raw material here. Then immediately, just one day, it's just waiting for one day at the factory. Okay? Then they, in the factory they make the car. The car is just in the factory for one day. It goes to the warehouse. Do you understand just in time? Yes. So a bad situation is the raw material, let's say it's steel, comes from this raw material supplier and it's in the factory for one month, taking up a lot of space. Right? Do you understand? Taking up a lot of space? Yes. And also taking up cash because we had to pay for the steel. Okay? So the Toyota made this just in time system. It's a technological system which lets them. We talked about this before with McDonald's and the paper company and the paper cup company, right? It lets them predict. Do you understand predict? Yes. How much steel they need exactly. So the steel just arrives at the factory just in time. Then they make the car. Then the car is only in the factory for one day. It arrives in the warehouse just in time. Okay? That's a just in time production. So Toyota has this new system. Should they keep this secret or tell their suppliers about the system? What do you think? If they tell the system to their suppliers, will their suppliers be able to make a more efficient product? Yes. Save money? Yes. Lower cost? So should they tell their supplier or not? Tell the supplier. Do they have to make a contract and the supplier has to pay them money? Or the supplier doesn't need to pay them money? Don't need the money. Don't need to pay the money. It's an advantage for me too. Okay, do you understand that idea? That's an, an example of this social contract. Okay? So we share the information with our supplier, not based on contracts or not based on money. Because we have a common goal of, of making the product at a good price. Okay? So that's an example of a social contract between Toyota and their uh, supplier. Right? So here we have a global manufacturer that has a joint venture with a local distributor. Do you understand joint venture? Yes. What does joint venture mean? Company. Hmm? Company A and Company B. <laughs> what do they do? They make a new company, right? Yes. Company C. That's a joint venture. Who owns this company C? 50-50, oh. right? Yes. So a manufacturer and a distributor make a joint venture. So we have a manufacturer and a distributor. Do you understand distributor? Yes. Distributing the goods. The relationship is going very well until the manufacturer approaches another distributor. The manufacturer finds another distributor. Okay? About selling different line of products. So they are selling cars and they are going to sell t-shirts. Okay? Since the existing contract said nothing about distributing a new product line. The manufacturer thought it's reasonable. It's not in the contract that I have to use them for t-shirts too. Right? It doesn't say that in the contract. So it's quite reasonable to use another distributor. Maybe this distributor knows better about t-shirts or has better contacts for distributing t-shirts. Okay? But how is this distributor going to feel? Happy or not happy? Not happy, right? They didn't get the business. The existing distributor was expecting to be given this opportunity. So they expected when we made the deal, if there's any future other product line, I'm going to be the distributor too. That's what they assumed. Did you understand assume? Did you look up assume after the last class? Assuming can be a big problem in business. Right? In the real life, after you graduate, people assume a lot of things. Uh, you assumed she was going to do something, but she didn't do it. Whose fault is it? Hmm? 
your fault, right? Internal attribution, you could say, it's my fault, because I assumed she was going to do that. I should have said to her clearly, can you do that? Okay? Or written her an email telling her to do that. But instead of that, I just assumed that she would do that. But she didn't. Okay? If you start working, are you going to assume a lot of things? <laughs> or are you going to communicate clearly to the people? Okay. Which are you going to do? Assume or communicate clearly? Okay, I made a mistake too when I was younger, when I started working. I assumed that somebody would know to do something, right? To let somebody know. But I didn't ask them. And they didn't. They didn't let the person know. And I think, oh, they're really silly. Why didn't they let the person know? They should know how to, to do that, right? But they didn't. And then I got into trouble because they didn't do that. Right? Do you understand? So I got into trouble. Why? Because I assumed they would do that instead of telling them to do that. Okay? So the same here. This one assumed that A is going to give them the business. Right? And they think the manufacturer has acted in bad faith. To act in bad faith means just do something that is mean. Do you understand mean? Or not nice. Because their assumption has never been made clear, their relationship suffers, even though there is no breach of contract. So maybe the relationship su suffers, maybe I'm not going to try so hard now. I won't care about this joint venture, I'm not going to sell the cars, okay? Do you understand? Yes. So that, that's where these kind of problems can start. It's not in the economic contract, but it's something we should have talked about, okay? At least I should have talked about with A. I should have said to A, if you have any more product line which you want to sell, are you going to use me as the distributor? Right? And then A will say, oh no, I won't, because you don't know about t-shirts. And then B will be surprised. What? Really? I thought you were going to use me. Okay? So then they can talk about it and find a solution. But if they just make an assumption at the start, then they can have a problem later. Okay? So the steps we should do we should be conscious about the social contract and we should have explicit discussions. Do you understand explicit? In implicit means just I, we don't talk. I understand. Some countries are different. Korean culture is quite implicit, right? You expect me to understand things. So for example, I ask my wife, where is something? She tells me it's in the kitchen. She, that's quite an implicit statement. She thinks I can find it in the kitchen, right? But of course I can't find it. So I always have to ask her, no, where is it? It's in the kitchen. And then where in the kitchen? In the cupboard. But I don't know which cupboard or where, right? So in Korea, you don't seem to give people as much details when they ask a question, right? You seem to give them a kind of vague response and you expect them to understand. But foreigners want to be told exactly the answer, okay? So, explicit means telling exactly. What do we expect? How do we expect to communicate? To help stave off, to help stop this kind of problem. Okay? We can make operating principles about confidentiality. Do you understand principles? Principle just means we promise to do that. But it's not legally binding. Do you understand legally binding? It's like if you go to the English camp. You make a principle. I, I won't speak Korean. Okay? If you speak Korean, can I throw you out of the camp? No. No. Right? Do you understand the idea of principle? Yes. It's not as strong as regulation or law. Okay? So we can make some principles about confidentiality. We shouldn't talk to the press without checking with the other person first. Okay? The use of intellectual property. Don't put our intellectual property on the internet. Seems obvious, right? Seems like we don't need to tell them, don't put our intellectual property on the internet. But the problem is we assume that they're not going to do that. Then what happens? They do that later. They have different thinking, different mind. Okay? What about dispute resolution? We will use mediation. So this can build trust and stability. So this is the what we should do. Have discussions and make some principles at the start about things which may not, we don't have to write in the contract, 
in the economic contract, but it's like a social contract. So here's an example in the real life. Ford and Mazda's top three executives and six other operating heads, they hold a three-day summit every eight months. You understand summit? First two days of this summit is about strategy and operations. But the third day is about repairing or realigning the social contract. So they spend one third of their time repairing and realigning the social contract when they meet the top heads of the companies. Okay? They might not be making a new economic contract. They are just talking about these things again. Right confidentiality, intellectual property, dispute resolution. Okay, just discussing. Discussing about those things to make sure they are all aligned. Do you understand aligned? Yes. Aligned means on the same line, in the same area. So they take the social contract seriously. They spend a lot of time on this. Okay? So here are some questions that they might be discussing. Consultation. How fully, about what, with whom, how formally, how frequently do we consult with the other person? Uh, usually it's a good idea to have regular meetings, like they have once every eight months, okay? Or once a month, okay? Uh, so here, how often are we going to consult with each other, A and B? Discuss, right? B thinks, I don't need to meet them. A thinks, wants to meet every week. So we make an agreement, let's meet every month, okay? What if there is uh, some emergency situation? How much information are we going to share? Decision making, right? How are we going to make decisions here? We have 50-50, okay? By consensus, by, by a vote, informally, formally. Who will be involved in the decision making? <coughs> How do you expect to handle unexpected challenges? So we have a new competitor here, okay? So what are we going to do if we have suddenly a new competitor? What kind of strategy? Do we agree on, on that kind of strategy? Okay. So to sum up, in a fast changing world, a positive, ongoing social contract can foster efficient sharing of information and know-how, lower the cost of adaptation, permit the exploitation of the opportunities uh, without making complete co contracts and reduce transaction costs. Okay? How much does it cost to pay the lawyers for a contract? Right? A lot. Recently one of my uh, friends, he is engineer and he made some new company about electronic engineering and he found an investor from Switzerland. They're investing 10 million dollars in his company. The investor from Switzerland spent 1% of their investment, $100,000. They paid to lawyer firm in Korea to make 150 page contract. Okay? Is that a lot of money, $100,000 to make a contract? Do you understand the situation? Korean guy wants to get the investment from the Swiss company. Swiss company pays $100,000 to make a contract. Do you think that's a lot of money to pay to the lawyers? Yes. Yes, it's a lot, right? That's three years salary for the average salary, okay? Does it take the lawyer three years work to make the contract? No, but anyway, they have a number of lawyers working on that. It will take them a few weeks anyway. They make 150 pages. So, uh, perhaps the investor wants to protect themselves, they're in a different country and so on, right? But that's a kind of transaction cost. So if we have a better social contract, we know each other and we have relationship and trust, we don't need to spend as much money on the lawyers and accountants, okay? So that's one advantage, okay? Then situation changes, we don't have to go to arbitration immediately or we don't have to make a new contract. We can. We already talked about what we would do, so we can save the time and the money. So then discuss with your uh, partners. We finished the part about the social contract. 
So what are the two main types of social contract? So there's two main types of social contract. What are they? Discuss with your partner. What are the two types of social contract? What are the two types? There's two types of social contract. Underlying, it means like here, right? Underlying, under the ground, or underlying, right? What does that mean? The real nature and what does duration mean? You know, Duracell batteries. Duracell comes from the word dur, duration. What does duration mean? Quality. Term, right? Or time. Okay. And then the second one. we ask about the ongoing social contract. Okay? They are how questions. So think of three examples of questions we can ask for the ongoing social contract. Okay? We should ask at the start. <coughs> I'll discuss with your partner. So we can see here this is the ongoing, right? <coughs> One, two, three <coughs> slides just before the end.
Sawyer. So, what, 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 give me an example of a question beginning with how. How about the human outside the agreement? Okay, so some action which is outside the agreement. Okay, other, two other questions. Two more questions. This is from Mickey. Begin the question with how. How will we share information? Okay, one more question. frequently should we meet? Okay. So if we discuss those kind of things to start, it can help to make good social contract. Okay? Do you have any question about social contract? No? Okay. So if we ignore the social contract and just work on the economic contract, we can have some problems. Okay? We can see like these guys here. Okay? People have different attitudes, people have different thinking, different minds. So we have to try and see, uh, do we have different assumptions? Okay? I have my assumption, you have your assumption, and we don't talk, then there can be a problem. So we should talk, find out our different assumptions, and make some agreement on the social contracts, so we can trust each other. Okay? Uh, then let's move on to the next part, cross-cultural negotiation. So, when we have cross-cultural negotiation, it's even more challenging to analyze the other side's interests. Why? We have to think of, leap over two hurdles. The first one is negotiation style. Maybe they have a different style of negotiating. The second one is underlying values and beliefs. They might have different values and different beliefs than us. So different style, different values, and different beliefs. Okay. So we have to use, it's called a gap analysis, to identify the major difference between your culture and the other side. So let's do uh, now. We can find a question, questionnaire about your values when you're doing the negotiation on this course, the internet course that we're using. Okay, so just So just log into the uh, log into this Coursera, right? Course on the computer. Maybe it will ask you to reset your password too. So you remember the name is Coursera. Can you remember your password? Yes. Hmm? We already logged in. We already signed up for this course.
So when you go to the course on the negotiation, which you signed up for, we go to the week two. And in week two, we have assess your negotiating style. Okay. So. Thank you. 